Yo, Elliot, I've been in a relationship now for a few months. I'm 27, and my girl is 21. Things have been going great, but I just recently found out that she used to think she was bisexual back in high school. She said she realizes she was wrong while she was in her sophomore year, yet she still posted stuff on social media about her being bisexual just a few months prior to us meeting. I don't know how I feel about this. She's lost her father before. She lost her father before she was born and her brother was murdered when she was a young teen. So she was saying that she just got lost and confused and trying to please everyone around her by getting attention. Her acting bisexual was apparently her way of getting attention. She really doesn't seem like the type to get attention anymore, and she's grown out of a lot uh, of that since we've been together, but I don't know if I trust what she's saying. Also, if she's actually still bisexual, what are some issues I can expect in my relationship? I'm not confident I want to build a strong family with a perversion like that in the foundation. I'd love to hear your insights. So the first thing I would offer you is to consider compassion. Having a little compassion for her for doing stupid things when she's had a tremendous amount of trauma. Just imagine the two most important men in a young woman's life died. They were taken away from her. Her father taken away from her before she was born, lost, dead. So even though she didn't know her father and hear her father is living within her, and so that's a pain, that's a trauma in her body to know, just the knowing that, where's daddy? Oh, sweetheart, daddy died, <laughs> right? That's a, that's a trauma to the young psyche. Why did daddy die? And children don't know how to differentiate between whether their experiences are caused by them or, or, or an outside cause. They still have that sort of vulnerable permeability to the world. So a lot of times children take on that experience as a, uh, with guilt, guilt, shame. Wow, like maybe, you know, daddy didn't love me and what did I do? And maybe it's my fault, right? The children, it's irrational, but this is how children think, right? They're, they're still swimming in their emotion and, they're, and, and, they, and they suffer. That's why they, things that happen to us very early on, they even say that there are pre, pre-birth traumas, right? Traumas that your mother experienced even before you were born that can be passed into the child or when you're in utero that is passed into the child. All this can be learned through uh, Bruce Lipton. He talks about, um, uh, I'm drawing blanks on everything today, but Bruce Lipton, look up some of his books. Uh, and then interneural psychology, Daniel Siegel. These are just experts that talk about the things that I'm and I'm talking about, right? Look up both those guys. They talk about like, you know, the trauma that happens and, and, the, and the way it embeds itself into the psyche and the body of the child. Crazy stuff. Anyway, not only that, but then her brother, who is her, her, her only other um, youthful experience of a male in her family, right? That's how usually it is for girls, right? It's my dad and my brothers. And that's the way it is for little boys. It's my mom and my sisters. Her father and her brother. That's a double wound. And so I could only imagine the type of confusion that she would be experiencing, especially given that this world makes uh, sexual identity a plaything. It's a trendy thing. It's a cool thing to be a gender bender, right? Um, it's trendy on, in, in, in social media. It's trendy in Hollywood. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun thing to mess with, right? It's a diabolical diversion that's caused us a lot of problems, right? And many people are suffering as a result, but this is where we are in the world. What are you going to do? When I grew up, it was cool to be a gangster, and I thought I wanted to shoot people and rob them. I, you know, I, I listened to, like, Tupac, and I listened to rap. Now they listen to Lil Nas X, and men think they can be pregnant. It's, it's just how we're brainwashed, right? We got to stay away from the media, man. It destroys us. I really, I legit thought I was a gangster. I was stealing, I was, I was a chain snatcher for, like, a month. <laughs> Right? And I got arrested and all that. My little friends ratted on me. And I was like, this ain't going to work. I'm not really a gangster. I'm not cut out for this. Right? 
She, and now young men don't do that anymore. We're not so much, you know, thinking we're gangsters, right? At least the ones that aren't, you know, really actually gangsters. We think that we're bisexual, right? We think that we can have a baby in our belly like, uh, like Lil Nas X, right? So it's just, a, it's, it's the perversion of the day. It's the perversion of the day and we have to be aware of it. She obviously fell prey to it, right? Being a 21 year old girl, it's that generation that suffers with that, right? So, um, she, she, she slipped, she fell, she made some mistakes. She can wake up out of that. That's legitimate. If she finds a, a, a good man, a strong man, a man that makes her feel like a woman, she can fall out of that very quickly. Now, here's the thing, though. You know, you ask me, what kind of, what kind of issues should I be worried about in terms of her being previously being bisexual? I just, I have to bring this up because it's, it's one of the perversions of our day, which is that people, their identity is no longer in their character. There was a time when people's identity was in their character, right? They're, they identified maybe with even the things that they do, right? I'm a, I'm a soccer player, right? Like a little a young lady would say, or I'm an artist, right? What our world has done today has made sexual uh deviance right and i use that word deviance meaning like deviating we're deviating from the path we've made that into a new identity so people identify with who they think they want to have sex with and it's a it's a strange thing it's like you know you are much more than who you who you think you're sexually attracted to and most people's sexual attractions are not actually their attractions it's whatever trend is of the day so it's like wow i guess uh I guess this is a cool thing to do now, and I guess I can try that out, and hey, maybe I'm like this, right? And so bisexuality, which doesn't actually mean anything, right? Uh, and, and all these you know, gray areas in between, they say there's like 46 different genders, they don't actually mean anything. What they actually mean is that you are falling prey to two things, our fallen nature. You're falling prey to the fallen nature, which is led by its lusts. Right. So not that I'm I don't I'm this is not to knock anybody of a sexual pers persuasion, but to just paint the broad brush over anyone who identifies with their lusts. Right. That's all it is. If you happen to be homosexual or bisexual or any of these other pansexual things, you're identifying with that which you want to poke and prod. Who identifies with that? That's identifying with our most base nature. Do I identify with the fact that that I that I have sex with my wife? Do I is that a part of my personality in public? And it's like, hey, I'm a I'm a, a, a monogam I'm a monogamer, right? Hey, Elliot, what are you? Well, you know, I'm a monogamer. I poke the same woman for the past thirty years, and wow, that's interesting. And so, how does that work out for you? And then I can have a I can write a book about it. This is what these people do. It's a false identity. It's a fake identity. And it's based on the most base instinct, sex. Nobody identifies with their, with who they have sex with, right? But they do now because yeah, we're lost. There was a time when we identified with God the Father, right? I am a Christian. I am a Muslim. I am a Jew, whatever it is, right? That's... E e that is a more noble identification, right? A spiritual, spirit's up here. Sex is down here. Why identify with what I do with my genitals when that's so animal-like, right? Even my dog, right? Animals have sex. But I, I, animals don't identify with ideology, spirit, right? God, right? So we are fallen so far that that's what people make their identity is who, what, what they want to do with their penis and vagina. It's weird. But anyway... So I have to kind of bring that up because it's not what she's identifying with it individually per se, right? Because there's 47 different things you could identify with. It's the fact that someone's identifying with what's de with what they who they want to have sex with, right? It's the weirdest thing. Anyway, that's my rant on that. Now I got to back up for a moment here and just kind of I want to get clear on what you're doing and why you're doing it. It is my opinion that there is no reason to get into a relationship or courting, right, pre-relationship with a woman if you have no intention of marrying her. 
The same way you go into business by choosing a business partner that you can see as an asset to your business is the same way that you vet someone who you're planning on marrying. You don't marry someone because you feel for them. And I can tell you this, if you're having sex with this girl, back up. Because all of your feelings, all of, let me put it this way, all of your thoughts about her are colored by the fact that you're having sex with her. So now, the same way I was cursing people who identify with their sex, you're identifying with your sex as well. It's just that you're, you, you, you're, you've, got a, you've got sex goggles on. So you're identified with the fallen version of you. And I say that in terms of falling into lust, falling into love, which most of our love is lust. So falling into lust and thinking that I can operate out of this delusion. You're deluded. If you're having sex with this girl, you're deluded. You can't see her for what she is. You're getting some senses, but it's hard to pull the trigger. It's hard to actually do something because oh, oh, you're addicted to her sex. So I would say before anything, stop fornicating. If you're trying to decide, that's number two. Number one is why are you with her? What are you doing? What are you doing? If, if you're, and you're 27 years old. 27 year old man, young man, in my opinion, you're getting ready. You're almost there. You should, you're reaching your sexual market peak. You're with a girl that's 21 years old. I wouldn't have any dealings with a young lady that way unless I was thinking about putting babies in there. And I wouldn't put babies in there until we are legitimately married. That's my wife, right? So if you're not planning on wifing her, which I don't think you should, there's just, there's just too much, there's too many red flags here, but that's my opinion. Um, then you just need to slow down. You need to back up. So that's getting your mind right, right? Get your, get your mind right by just, by objectifying a little bit, right? Women say, oh, don't objectify me. Well, if you don't objectify her, you'll never see her as she is because you're too subjective in the experience. Boom, objective. You got to be able to see, you got to step back, see what I'm doing here. Look at your life from the helicopter viewpoint. Where was I, where I am and where am I going? And does this make sense? Think about it like a business. Who you choose as a life partner is more important than who you go into business with. People put all this time and energy into their business or into their sports or into their school. They put zero rational power behind who they're going to marry. Why? Fornication. That's why fornication is a bad idea, fellas. Right? Elliot's not an old boomer just trying to make you not have a good life. I would like for you to have a good life, a great life. But the reason why fornication is a sin is because it screws up your mind. You can't see her. You can't see her for what she is, and you're not operating from a place of calm. You're operating from a place of emotional turmoil. So these are just a few things that I want to bring to your attention with regard to this young lady. I will have compassion for her. She might be well worth it. She might be well worth being a wife. That's up to you to figure out, but you're not going to figure that out until you stop having sex with her. You can't see her. Guarantee you can't see her until you stop having sex with her, right? And I'm not saying this is for all men across all the board. Some men are such psychopaths that they could just poke, prod, and play with a woman and then just be gone, right? If you got a heart, <laughs> right, then you, you, you can't do that. You just physically can't do that, right? You just, it, just, it will hurt you to do that. My soul would be tormented if I did that to someone. But it's just me. I don't know. Some people, men and women, they're just so, they, are, they, believe, they treat their bodies like a tool, and they see other people's objects, right? And so if that's the kind of life you choose to live, I could, I could promise you it's going to grow old. I promise you you're going to grow sick of it. I just reposted a, this old article from like 2001 on my Instagram about the woman that created the, the, uh, the, the show on TV, Sex in the City, right? right? She's an old bird now, right? She's 60 now. You know what she said? The, highlight of the, the headline of the article is, I was wrong. All this romping in the bed with all these different men over all these different years has left me empty. Not only empty, but used up, right? Because who, who wants to marry that? You've been betting down for a billion different dudes, and now you, you, we, oh, why would I even want to get with you? I don't even get it. I don't understand. Is it? But she gets it. Now she gets it. That was a waste of time, right? So, but some people like wasting their time. They like wasting their life. But me, I'm not going to give you that kind of advice. So that's it, dude. I hope that helps.
Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.